It's about the restoration of our republic. We want to educate, encourage, enable the power. We stand for integrity, honesty, self-reliance, self-defense, and most importantly, no compromise on our foundational principles. This is America's Voice Now. Find America's Voice Now on Facebook and at americasvoicenow.org. Here's Michael Evans. Good morning, America. You're listening to America's Voice Now. My name is Michael Evans. I'm the host here. And um, we are, uh, well, we're joining in our, on our third segment this morning. Um, The goal of AVN is to disrupt, to be a disruptor. I'm a monkey wrencher. What do I mean by that? Well, I like to expose the mainstream media and the Ministry of Propaganda for fooling you, give you the truth, or at least help you decipher it in and amongst the mountains of trash that are thrown at you so that you're able to identify and see where the problems lie. And the whole idea is that you will have an opportunity to recognize treasonous abuse when it's, when it's given or offered to you, right? In other words, when the, when the lies come fast and furious and hot and heavy, the object is for you to recognize when you're being manipulated and lied to. Now, perfect example. Dianne Feinstein came out the other day, and she said, the Republican Select Committee on Benghazi is a lynch mob. What? Actually, Dianne, the nation would be a whole lot better off if it was a lynch mob. So 50 million Americans need to all stand up and say, We're putting the federal and state capitals under siege. We're going on a national strike. We're going to stop working. We're going to stop paying our taxes, our mortgages, our credit cards. We're going to hit the banks and the treasuries where it hurts. And then we're going to mark every one of you, starting with you, Diane, and your your pal, uh, Harry Reid, and Chuck Schumer, and Nancy Pelosi, and Boehner, and McCain, and Lindsey Graham, and all the rest of those traitors up there. We're going to mark all of you dishonorably discharged and we're going to exile you all of you from the nation and strip you of your citizenship for acts of treason now that's not a lynch mob in the met in the means that you mean it to be you want us to think that this is all about you well i beg to differ diane this isn't about you this is about us and you've been betraying us for long enough The truth is that these people have, for all intents and purposes, sold our nation out for their own personal power and finances. And, I mean, listen, people, for the, for the, just look at it from this perspective. Since the 1960s, when we started the Great Society, the war on drugs, the war on this, the war on terror, the war on fat, the war on whatever, the war on spoons that make you fat. We've spent, what, $25 trillion? $25 trillion. I mean, we could have taken the members of Congress, that, and many of them have been around almost since the 60s, and we could have personally written them a check for a billion dollars each and gotten off cheap. Instead, they've sold our entire nation down the road for, what, a few million dollars each that they can't even expose because, you know, they got it in a brown paper bag. They're doing it right now. They're doing it by releasing these criminal illegals into our society and immigration is now a national emergency. And even the New York Times, the number one apologist for immigration policy change and 
the number one apologist for the Obama administration, can't deny it. I'm going to just tell you a little secret here. What you don't know is that one of the biggest problems we have at immigration, especially on our southern border, is children who come into the system with no parental supervision. They are Their parents pay these uh, coyotes to bring them over the border. And those that aren't raped, murdered, and killed on the way or sold into slavery or sold into sex trafficking um, and who actually make it here, uh, we can't even send them back because we don't know where to send them. We don't know how to send them. We don't have facilities to handle thousands upon thousands of children. Now, just for the record, the number of children migrants in, 20, in, in 2011 was only 4,059 accompanied youths. Only 4,059. That number, in and of itself, is a crime against humanity. 4,059 unaccompanied children were picked off by, by border agents. That's the ones we caught. That's a crime. For everyone that came across the border, untold how many, we, we, and we'll never know, were raped, robbed, sold into, tra into slavery, sold into sex trafficking. Their parents... Uh, manipulated and and uh, held hostage while or uh, charged while their children were held hostage. But worse yet, 4,059 was the number in 2011. That's when this administration began the Dreamer program talk. That's when they said, well, we're going to let anyone who's, who's under the age of 18 who's here stay because it's not their fault. Well, last year, in 2013, that number went from 4,059 to 21,000. Because the word is spread. Get to America and you can stay. And desperate parents the world over are pumping up and, and doing whatever they can to pump the money forth to pay these people to get their kids across the border. And they're so desperate to leave their own disastrous country, which they don't have the, 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 the balls to overthrow, that they're willing to risk their children in the hands of strangers who already are, operate you know, in such a way that it should immediately cause them fear for the safety of their child. How irresponsible. That's child abuse under the guise of trying to save your child. How ridiculous. But more important, the number went from 4,059 in 2011 to 21,000 in 2013. And guess what? This year they said, oh, the numbers are going to go up even more because of the DREAM Act nonsense. So guess what? They said, we're expecting that number to go from 21,000 to 60,000. Well, we're in May and it's already 60,000. We're not even halfway through with the year and we've already broken their highest estimate. It's gotten so bad. It's gotten so bad. It's gotten so bad that they have declared an emergency. An emergency. The Department of Homeland Security declared a crisis this week and moved to set up an emergency shelter at a, an Air Force base in San Antonio. Department of Health and Human Services are opening a shelter that will house 1,000 minors at Lackland Air Force Base in Texas. They don't know what to do with them all. They're pouring over the border. They don't know what to do with them all. They don't know where to send them. Half the time, their parents can't be found. These are kids coming from El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, Brazil, Argentina, Venezuela. How do you find a parent? The youngest of these children was three. 
three. Meanwhile, we've allowed literally 36,000 criminals convicted of crimes to be released back into our society. And lest you say that, well, you know, you're trying to make a big deal out of nothing. Uh, I, I, I beg to differ with you. That is not the truth. The real truth is that the people who have been released are, are, are and, and we've got empirical proof from the last time that this was done, and I'm, I'm going to find it for you here because, um, well, you got to see the number. But, oh, here we go. All right. In 2011, we released 7,283, right? So that's, what, one-fifth of the ones we just released. And that, that group of 7,300, less than 7,300, went on to commit 16,000 new crimes, including 19 murders, 142 sex offenses, 1,420 drug crimes, 682 cases of burglary and theft, and 48 firearms charges. So don't tell me that this isn't an issue. Don't tell me that these are good people. You're a liar. You're a liar. You are a liar. I want you to tell that to the grieving mother or wife or child of one of the 19 people who were murdered when we did this only three years ago or the 142 victims of sexual abuse, rape. Tell me Tell me. Tell them, in fact. Here, I want you to stand in front of a rape victim and say, You're, the crime that was committed on you doesn't matter. Because these people have rights. We released 36,000 criminals into our society who have not paid the penalty for the crimes that they've actually committed, which included scores of murders and rapes and robberies and kidnappings and drug charges and assaults and beatings and... That's treason. Treason. T-R-E-A-S-O-N. Jay Johnson, the new head of Homeland Security. Guilty. Barack and St. Obama, guilty. The head of ICE, guilty. The men who turned the key and let them out, guilty. They're trying, the left is desperate, desperate to find some uh, kind of, of, a, of a, an opportunity to claim that they are, that, th that this is something different than what it is. In fact, one of them was just interviewed. These are apologists for, I mean, how do you defend the indefensible? I mean, that's like coming out and saying that there's some defense for a guy like Bundy. Uh, um, what was his name? What was that serial murderer who killed 30 or 40 women or something in, in Florida? Uh, what was his name? I can't think of it. That's like saying that there's an that, that you're an apologist for Charles Manson. How do you say that? How do you defend the indefensible? How do you defend Jeffrey Dahmer? Well, he was hungry. I mean, okay, but we're all hungry, but, you know, we don't start eating each other. There's an immigration attorney, uh, Gonzalez. <laughs> Golly gee. Is that surprising? 
His name wasn't Smith. It's Gonzalez, of course. He claims that the controversy surrounding the Obama administration release is a publicity stunt. A publicity stunt? No, that statement is a publicity stunt. He's the liaison to the Executive Office for Immigration Review, which, or has been, excuse me, he's passed, which administers the immigration court system and the American Immigration Lawyers Association. Ah, now we begin to see the light. See, here's a guy who's got an ax to grind, and he's willing to betray and sell out the country he lives in and the bar association that gave him his title, his title of foreign esquire, by the way, which automatically disqualifies him as a citizen and should strip him of his and, and exile him from the nation, according to the original 13th Amendment. Go look it up. And he was asked about the scandal on Fox News with Judge... Uh, uh, Judge Jeannie, or Judge Deneen. He told the audience, I think all of you fell for the publicity stunt by Mr. Elliot and Miss, what was it, Brenda Elliot and Mr. Aaron Klein in their book, Impeachable Offenses, that came out a couple of weeks ago. They were denouncing the Obama administration for releasing all these people. And Judge Deneen pointed out to him, she said, I I'm not here to promote anybody's book. We're having a discussion that has nothing to do with that. But the truth of the matter is, it, go it gets even worse because... This, what he was trying to do was point out that this came out of that book, and that's not where it came from at all. This was on the Center for Immigration Studies, which didn't come from some book. This came from the direct whistleblowing of, of uh, uh, ICE individuals and from an ICE report. This wasn't pulled out of some book and some figment of some dude's imagination. He went on and said, well, apparently you fell for it because that's what this is. This is a publicity stunt. This group, the Center for Immigration Studies, we know what they are. Oh, so now you're going to try and throw some Southern Poverty Law Center um, a, a, a and cast dispersions on them because they, what, they tell the truth? You see, in the book, Impeachable Offenses, they were actually talking about releases of, of criminal aliens that happened between 2009 and 2011. They weren't even talking about this last group of 36,000. You know why? Because the book was published before that news even hit the street. And it just goes to show you how traitors and statists and liars and thieves and cutthroats for their own personal benefit will rewrite history. In that book, they were documenting the 7,000 criminals released in those years who, ought, who went on to commit 19 new murders, 142 sex crimes. So ask yourself, ask yourself the question, if, if, if 7,000 went on to commit what, 16,000 new crimes, how many will 36,000 commit who are already guilty of 88,000 crimes in the first place, which they never served a sentence for? You've got Americans sitting in prisons who have been given draconian sentences for the most nonsensical crap, and you've got them releasing and cutting loose murderers, rapists, child rapers, molesters, kidnappers, robbery Assault, bank robbery. What are we flipping nuts? And you got a piece of human trash, human awful, human excrement named Rayed Gonzalez. And he's trying to make apology for it trying to dissuade you from knowing the truth, trying to point you to something else to make it sound like it's a scandal made of nothing. It, the, the issue that he's addressing is a scandal that should have been a national news anyway. So he's pointing to a lesser scandal to try to say, well, see, it's all smoke and mirrors. No, let me tell you something. It's not all smoke and mirrors. I'm going to tell you why. Because 19 people are dead as a result of it. And 142 women have been raped or children have been raped. 
as a result of just 7,000 of them being cut loose years ago. If, you know, I've heard the phrase, uh, if, if it just saves one child, if it just saves one child, it's worth it to take away those guns from those crazy, those crazy militia people and stuff. If it just saves one child, everyone's rights should be stripped. Really? So let's follow your advice. Let's take the non-existent rights these people don't actually have because they're not American citizens. Yes, they have human rights, but they don't have rights to come into this country and do as they please. Yes, they should be treated humanely. But after you've committed a crime and you've murdered someone, you've raped someone, you've robbed someone, you've stolen from someone, you've held someone at knife point, you've kidnapped their child and, con and, and convinced the parents to give you money, you don't have any more rights. You voluntarily waive them. I'm tired of treason, America, and I'm tired of apologists for treason. I'm tired of apologists in the media. I'm tired of apologists in Congress. I'm tired of apologists in the administration. I'm tired of apologists to ICE, DHS, Border Patrol. I'm sick to death of it. And Americans are dying at their hands. They have blood on their hands. And I'm tired of hearing how I should feel bad for a rapist, a murderer. But I should ignore 42 vets who died at the hands of pencil-pushing bureaucrats. The disconnect is so outrageous. <sighs> Folks, you're listening to America's Voice. This is the stuff that the mainstream... Made. You won't ever hear this. You'll never hear, this out of, you'll never hear that rant out of Rush Limbaugh. Why? Why? I don't dislike Rush. I just don't think he's willing to sit down and do the hard stuff. I don't think he's willing to take the risk. I don't think he's willing to take the chance. I don't think any of these people are willing to stand out there and say what really needs to be said. These are crimes of treason. Crimes of murder. Crimes of accessory. Crimes of aiding and abetting the enemy. $400 million, a $400 million contract, $40 million bucks a year. I don't know. I, I, if, if somebody paid me $40 million bucks a year, I, I, I wouldn't be afraid to say it, I'll tell you that. And if that was the price, I wouldn't take it. We'll be back in just a minute. You're listening to America's Voice now. When we come back, we're going to talk about guns and how they're trying to shut it down. Their goal is to enslave you, America. Wake up. <laughs> 